Hey everybody, Scott Dowell and we're back with another Capture One tutorial, and today we're going to talk about the new style brushes. They've been out for about a month or so now, and I've had a chance to use them quite a bit, and I have uh, you know a bit of an impression I'd like to pass on to you, and uh, some tips and tricks and things like that that I found uh, that are pretty handy. Uh, so first of all, realize that the Capture One style brushes, the ones that ship with the product, are in the Capture One program style brushes folder. They're not in the same location as the custom ones that we're going to make. So be aware of that they're in a different spot. I'm not so much worried about these. I'm very concerned about the ones that I'm going to create because they're in a hidden directory that I normally don't back up. I had covered that in a previous video where I actually lost all of my process recipes and everything. And I was a little, uh, little um, upset about it and I had to remake all those. So I'm going to show you where that directory is in a bit uh, so you can make sure you back that up. Uh, so style brushes, uh, I've moved them around. Uh, I like them on this tab here. Of course, you can move the tools anywhere you'd like by you know picking them up and moving them around. Uh, you can also go up to view, uh, I say window, create floating tool, find them in there. Or uh, you can right click on any uh, header of any tool, add tool, and then find it in there as well. Uh, so style brushes uh, come in two forms. One is the custom style brush and one is the built-in, which I just showed you where those are located. Uh, the custom ones are ones you're going to make yourself. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Uh, so how you use them is relatively simple, uh, but I think, uh, so my knee-jerk reaction to this tool was, it was meh, I was whatever, it didn't really excite me, but the more I've used it, the more it's helped me in a couple areas. The biggest one being naming my layers. I never la labeled my layers, I never rename them, so they're always like a, a morass of things going on there. So if I say I want more contrast here, and I make my brush a certain size, note that when you click on this, it is giving you brush settings, so the amount of flow, opacity, hardness, size. I right click to get this menu, by the way. All those things are gonna come with this brush. So when I go ahead and brush on the contrast here, um, you can see that it's doing some things that I probably don't really like, but and we're gonna use it for their own anyway. Um, so there we go, I've increased the contrast. Now I can look and see what this tool has done. If I go into the different settings, um, I can see that it's increased the contrast, for example. I can look and see if it's done anything with the colors and shadows and so on. Uh, so your your ability to go in after the fact and nuance this is completely allowed. Like there's no reason why it wouldn't let you do that. Uh, so that's really cool. It kind of gives you a quick and dirty uh, solution. Now, if you're looking to add your own, which is what I have done, uh, because if you're a viewer of this channel and you watch my live streams, you know I like to add some pop to the hair. So if I click on hair details, which is a brush I've already created. And again, if I right click on it, you can see the flow and everything is, is completely wonky um, compared to the other one. I like 100% flow for this specific effect. Uh, so this is all fine with me. Uh, so what I would do is I go ahead and just brush that on here, here. And it's really more of a clarity pop than anything else. That's really what it's doing. But it created that hair details preset for me here. And then if I look, it is really more just, just a bit of clarity. And that has uh, added that little bit of zing to the image that I sometimes like and maybe maybe not specifically in this case and it might be a bit over the top but you get the idea. Now to create your own is relatively simple as well just create a new empty adjustment layer and let's give it a name let's call it um, like this video. Yeah that'll be good and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and brush it on let's say this back wing here so I'm just going to brush it on with the brush hit M for mask I can see what it did and you say hmm you know maybe I want a little bit less flow with this one. This is one of those I'm going to nuance in uh, so I can work with the mask on, obviously, if I want to see what I'm doing um, as I'm working. You can also, uh, there's a little bit of an unknown thing here. If you hit Alt M, you can actually see the black and white version of the mask. Uh, that may or may not be handy. In some situations, it's really great. In some, it's uh, not very useful. Uh, but you have the ability, which is cool. So once I get the mask done the way they like, I'm like oh yeah, that's, that is really what I was looking for there. Then I can go ahead and say, well, you know, I want a little bit of contrast here and maybe I want a little bit of clarity. Something like this of the, let's say the Lightroom classic type here, cause that's a thing. And then I can go say, you know, I want to add a few to the veins of the feathers here. So I've added this, this mask here and a bit of a lower flow to some of these up here. All right, this is great. I think, wow, I'm going to use this a lot. I can see this being one of my favorite adjustments to images from this point forward. Just right click on it choose save adjustment as style brush. It's gonna ask you what parts of this do you wanna save? Do you wanna save the brush settings, meaning override what the user currently has set to this setting or not? And I'm gonna say, you know what? They're not that important to me and the eraser settings, I don't wanna play with those either. So I'm gonna click save and it's gonna open up this location. And this is the problem child here. This app data folder is typically hidden from users on a PC. 
Uh, so if you put it in here, note that you're gonna have to back it up. But if we back up one directory, capture one here, you can see this is where all your process recipes are stored. Now it's obviously not gonna show them because of this uh, filter here, but all your process recipes are stored in here. Um, any presets that you use, any other things are all stored in here. So I tend to back up a few of these because I don't want to lose my stuff. And uh, yeah, I've done that before. And if you watch that video, I was a little, a little verklempt uh, from losing that. So don't, uh, don't make the mistake that I did. And I've had a few users contact me and said, you know, they watched that video and they didn't back it up. And then they ended up uninstalling a beta and or having a problem with Capture One they need to reinstall. And it took all the recipes out. So make sure you find this directory and you back it up. And of course you can keep your style brush in here and then use it again in the future. When you do that, it will create that layer with that name and you're good to go. So I really like these. And as I say, there, there are some in here that are pretty handy. Uh, there are some that I just would probably never use, uh, but that's here nor there. The, the nice thing is though, that if you do find them in here, these are all just XML files. So if you're a geeky kind of person and you want to get here and play with them, um, you can actually open these with Notepad, for example and you'll see that it's an XML file. So if you want to go ahead and nuance these values without using the interface for some strange reason, then you could certainly do so. This also gives you the ability to share brushes with friends. So you could obviously just upload these into a zip file and throw them over to somebody and they just need to put them into the user directory. Um, I haven't played with, if I put things in this directory, if they'll work or not, uh, that would be kind of interesting. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, so that would be maybe a better way to do this is to keep my, my new, uh, my custom brushes in with the regular Capture One brushes. I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll play with that when we, uh, when we get to that situation. Uh, but anyway, that's my two cents on the new style brushes. And I really like them. As I said, I initially was not a big fan because I was like, you know, would you just fix some of the other digital asset management aspects of Capture One and not so much worry about the color editing or the, the editing of the images. Uh, but now I have to say that I'm actually pretty happy with this. Um, I will use this tool, I do use this tool. And uh, I have created, as I say, a couple of different custom brushes, uh, but for the most part, um, I think the ones that come with the tool are, they're covering a pretty good gamut of uh, opportunities for editing on these images. And again, that ability to edit on multiple layers really makes a huge difference. Everybody take care and uh, stay safe. If you like the video, click the magic like button and I really appreciate it. And I will catch you all next time.